This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm ready to have some fun with you guys. And I love, so scheduling has been very difficult lately, but I love that we have like still rolled through a rotating cast. Either it's Ponder here or it's Katie or no two at the same time which means more one-on-one time, I suppose, with my co-hosts. And I've just been, I've just been getting individuals. This is like, where this is our review meeting, apparently. They're, um, they're the same people. It's, what's that? We're all the same people. We're all the same people. That's the problem. With me, make sure I got the right buttons here. The Chilla is back with us from Studio C in the Big D of Dormont, PA. Uh, also hailing from Big Bank, Big Bank International Esquire. <gasps> How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh. I missed. I missed like all the. Hey, did you get a new iPhone? Hey, what else did you get? Well, you're Crafts in luck. A new phone and a new because watch. the UPS guy just showed mm. up today. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes, uh, and and I think I got everything. It's, I'm still in the downloading phase. I got my passwords working and stuff like that. I have my um my my yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 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 enjoying the the island. Um, yeah, cause I've, this is new to me. I'm coming from a 13 pro max to a 16 pro max. So, um, yeah, so far so good. I haven't done anything really specially, uh, a uh, new iPhone 16 with it yet, but, uh, you know, really just kind of getting things going and trying to get back to, um, the status quo. Uh, so uh, where are you on your iPhone cycle, sir? I am iPhone 16 pro. Okay. With the old Mac, what case? What do you mean? Yes. Oh, it's a it's a like Bondi blue something or other. It's, yeah, well, it's yeah, it's the turquoise one. Oh, so okay, wow. this is interesting. So okay, so let's let's touch base because a lot of people have had uh, Missy got to pick hers up last like two Fridays ago, so she's had hers for a bit. Okay, um, mm-hmm. I have been I I went big i went with the terabyte uh pro max so i'm like you know what i was i was hovering around that 500 gig part although i realized uh when amanda was in that i had about 200 gigabytes of podcasts on my phone apparently (laughs) i I, I never listened to um so there's that so 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 um i i was really kind of i am still i had this like i'm not excited for a new phone i'm getting this because the other one's three years old basically right and literally mm-hmm. i used it on a video shoot two two weeks ago on a on a on a stu- on a shoot and that's the biggest thing to upgrade for me is to get that like what is the newest camera that i get to you know use and hopefully bump up what we're doing visually and everything right mm-hmm. so I, I got something in early november that i'm hoping to use it a little bit on um because we do a lot of interviews and i use it as a secondary camera a lot of times with the cinematic mode so i'm hoping it looks it works a little bit better you got a little bit more high resolution i haven't looked into the stats on that yet um but but very interested to see what that looks like but generally it's like oh cool i got this island thing and i kind of like how it and, and i don't know if you saw from last week we were talking about notch nook which add is adds a lot of those island features to your macbook with that little notch, mm-hmm. even I added it to my Mac Mini with that, with that. So I introduced the notch to my. Listen, it's just notch, um, um, notch across the board. <laughs> this is the word for it. synchronicity. It's notch synchronicity across the board. Apparently now, um, so I still have my thirteen. I, honestly, I think I have a. I lost an Android phone several months ago on my business account. I think I'm throwing the thirteen on that. If they don't let me cancel the the line that I've been paying for with no phone, uh, so um, so I think I might, might be doing that because this is like I just feel like this is still so very useful at this point. Yeah, and I mean we get so we get minimum five years out of our devices so minimum yeah so what but we have like a 
we we have our own. Oh, you're talking the hand me down process. You're you're not you're not holding on to a phone you're using for five years. Right, but we're what we do is you know, I get a new phone every year. Carla gets my phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Um, I okay. unlocked the phone that's I apparently. Pl- <laughs> I, I unlocked the phone that's apparently plugged into the Zoom computer. So sorry about that. It did the whole <laughs> like. I'm gonna un- hold on. I'm gonna unplug it now. There you go. <laughs> Continue. So, so, yeah, mine goes to Carla. Carla goes to Christopher's. Christopher's goes to my neighbor. Mm-hmm. My neighbor goes to his aunt. Okay. You got a and neighbor she, involved in this situation. Yeah. Yes. Well, even like. So, yeah, but but know. I mean, you think about it though, like. And I will say on occasion, the battery has to get replaced by like yes. fifth year mm-hmm. or, or sometimes fourth year, but like, and they're still going strong. I think they even handed that over to someone else. So mm-hmm. yeah, so we're 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. And I know they still have a 10 floating around over there. So <laughs> we did that. have an un- unfortunate event with, I can't remember what model it was, um, where it got dropped in the crease of the couch, mm. and it was like a recliner couch, and it, and it, it was right on the, the right on the mechanism, right, right on the right on Ooh, the thing. Yeah, it was that's the thing I'm always afraid of. I had one drop between the. I don't know if you've been to the Dolby Cinema at the AMC, um, mm-hmm. in, in those recliners they have. It, it it fell in between. I'm like, oh no, this is a problem, isn't it? And I'm like, don't decline, don't do anything like this. There's a forklift coming out right now, guys. What is he doing on this side? Oh. Come through the window. Oh no! I think um. So I think Lapamas to- took over the church next door and they're doing some work. And they just they okay. just brought a whole forklift stuff of stuff over to the church, and they're using my driveway. This is really fascinating. <laughs> I don't. I'm gonna. I have a feeling it's gonna get really active over here on this side of the street. But anyways, um. What do you? Oh man! Uh, if you do, if you hit that car, you're on camera, pal. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Live podcasting, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, no. So the, good. Go ahead. Uh, no, we, so we we also um because we we're still playing for the paying for the Apple Care. I don't know if we're going to still pay them on our thirteens. Um, but we are like we just replaced our batteries in the last month because we're like, hey, whatever the next phase is, I think she's going to do a hand me down uh, to her family, and um, I'm going to keep mine around as a secondary. It, you know, it, it's nice to have a secondary phone when the first one is doing the video, right? Is is one thing that I've been running into now. I, now that they're they're handily very useful. Because that was definitely not a thing that I wanted to do with this 8 Plus. You know, that we have been using this in studio, at least for the board. Um, you know, we've been putting the NDI app on it and, and sending the video to vMix here um, for the Dungeons and the Dragons. It's a great for just the, the play board, you know, to have a shot on that. Because mm-hmm. I don't need something that syncs. I just need something that keeps an eye on it. And they move a piece and you have a reference that's going to sit in the corner. You know, so that's been really good. I'm really excited to upgrade to the 13 pro max in that regard and have a little bit more oomph behind it a little bit better wi-fi and hopefully all that kind of gets better so now what do i do chilla with my eight plus and my x (laughs) well the x the x can't be that's cut off from os i think they're both they're both cut off at this point i think they're both it still makes a decent maybe yeah you know carry music podcast absolutely you know and you can always tether your if you needed an internet and a pinch on it, you can always, you know, use your um, hotspot. Can so I, you, I don't know. There's there's a can, lot of options. Can, can you tell you the thing? So um, uh, this thing right before I had to go get go on my my pre show errands, um, the phones uh, synced um, together, and I'm really impressed because like the fo- the the watch seemed to sync together. Missy had to reset her watch even though she used the same method. It took like something like four hours to bring everything over because I don't have a terabyte of stuff on my phone. Um, it's still downloading the apps and all that stuff now. But anyways, so so we were on the road. It was like, oh hey, let's pick up some Duncan. Oh no, I gotta log into Duncan. Oh no, I need to log into LastPass. Oh no, I need this password that's here. That's here. 
but and they have this other phone, but it's not on the on on sale anymore. So I had to uh, personal hotspot myself to my new phone to get the password because <laughs> it's all locked in there to bring it oh, to to copy and paste over to the other phone through through syn- that synchronizing deal, right? Um, so which is like um, oh, uh, you know, I, it, it, like this juggling of technology was so interesting, and, 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 and I'm bumping it so it keeps doing that thing because I'm holding them next to each other and it keeps detecting each other. And we're like, what is going on here? <laughs> so. Anyways, so that's a lot of I fun. Wish, so, something that you know, if the if the app gods are out there, mm-hmm. <clears throat> there's a couple apps that I've seen and that I use professionally that you can really only have them installed on one phone at a time mm-hmm. for security purposes. But the interesting thing is, they have a capability that when you're and you can't, they won't back up the iCloud. Um. But the interesting thing is if you sign into them and you go to like your new device, there's actually a, on on the original device where it still is, there's like a migrate button Mm -hmm. and it uses QR code scanning between the two phones Mm -hmm. and proximity to validate that it should be transferred. And then it just moves everything over. Like I wish more of the, like I totally get it last pass. You know what I mean? Like you, they want yeah. you to use your password. But, like, but if I have my other phone there and I'm just going to be rekeying the password anyway, mm-hmm. like let it just suck all this stuff. In there. So, and it's interesting because so between that and I have, um, I have, um, sorry, I was, I was, I was, I, we'll get to the chat here in a second. Uh, between that, once I got everything loaded, like a lot of things already logged in. Um, like, mm-hmm. like my Facebook, TikTok, a lot of the social medias were already there and logged in. So it did take those over. So I'm really impressed. Um, it, it's also really funny. I had an issue cause I, I, um, uh, upended my entire day on Monday cause, cause the phone was supposed to, was coming in a couple of days early. I'm like, okay, I'll stick around. It's 11 to three. It gets delayed to seven o'clock and I give up around like four 30 and come in and start doing some work that, that I can't take home. I, I needed to edit something yesterday. Right. Um, and then I get a, oh, they left it, you know, I got the thing and got the delivery attempted and I'm like, what are you talking about? There's no signature on this. Like if you go to the site and I double check the virtual assistant. So here's a little tip. If you are getting UPS in, it will require a signature. And for some reason it doesn't come through to the tracking software that you log into to see what's going on. So, so, um, because I talked with the UPS guy, because they actually showed up here at the office, Missy was staying home doing work. So she could, because I had to be here to edit. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm like, are you going to Belasco? Have you been to Belasco? And he's like, yeah, I got one. And I was like, I'm like, here, let me see if it's in the truck. I was like, okay. And, and I signed for it and it was good. But he showed me like, Hey, yeah, there's this weird notification. We used to leave it. We got in trouble. Because Apple wants us to sign for it. And it was like, but it doesn't. And I was like, that's interesting. It doesn't trans. This is just like last week I complained about on Patreon how apparently I have Disney Plus with no ads on my account on Verizon Fios. But they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> like don't the website tells me the website tells me every plan that I can select has it. But everybody I talk to at Verizon says we do not offer this anymore. Uh, but they did a make good on it. And, and uh, it fell out that now I have the bundle for ten dollars, I'm getting less, but I'm technically paying for the bundle. But they are giving me a free modem, so I it, it works out three dollars cheaper. Uh, so now I have Hulu with ads and, and ESPN Plus, which you know, is just, and I, I don't think I can I don't think I can change the ads without screwing up my bundle. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm stuck with Hulu with ads. So I don't know where, wherever whatever that is, I'll l- learn to live with it, I suppose. Um, especially since I'm technically getting it free at this point. Anyways, um, from Dave Potter, hello, awesome people, live from the Starbucks in Armorville. I'm familiar with that area. Nacha Mania, I think, is our ti- show title, by the way. I'm going to have to share that. I'm going to have to save that one. And uh, let me get that screen cap. Oh, how do I screen cap on the new phone? Oh, no. There we go. There's an extra button I'm not used to. Um, Sorg, is there a difference between the 3X and the 5X in the shots you are taking? Do you think I've had time to take pictures with this thing? <laughs> so, no, I haven't, I don't think I've, I've opened the, the camera app except for maybe to catch a QR code or something like that. So, um, but yeah, that's not, you know, that, that's, that's fine. Um, so anyways, uh, so I got the new phone, you know, again, I'll play with it a little bit here next week. Hopefully I'll have more to kind of talk to you about. Um, really, I'm just kind of, I'm sure most of the stuff I'm enjoying are things that Katie's been showing me that she's been able to do with her phone for the last year. 
Um, the biggest takeaway I think is going to be when we do get to things like the fact that there will be AI on this phone whenever that happens and that there will be a um, uh, better camera um, than three years ago technology, obviously. So um, the other thing I'm excited about, because I always hear Alex Lindsay talk about this when he's on Mac break or, uh, or over on, on, on office hours global, there's that. The, so the, the, I guess that's a customizable action button now. And I'm looking forward to being able to click that and get into chat GPT. So, um, I'm, so that, that, that's one, that's one modification I want to get into. Uh, side note, not happy with DuckDuckGo. The experiment may be over, Chilla. What, what happened with DuckDuckGo? I'm not entirely happy with how it parses my searches. Okay. What do you, okay. So in particular, I'm playing like a dragon Yakuza last night. <laughs> In the last couple of days, actually. Getting past a really hard part. And I'm reading these walkthroughs, and it says about, hey, did you get this skill? And then it's like, okay. And then I'm trying to do a search of Yakuza Like a Dragon. How do I get da-da-da-da-da? And I'm getting a bunch of different stuff. Nothing that, you know, and then you go to Google. It says, oh, yeah, this is this and this and this. I feel like it doesn't parse the information you're trying to ask it as well as Google does. And this is what okay. I was concerned with. It's just like, hey, this is kind of a dumber you know, I was like, hey, this is really nice because it's like Google from 10 years ago. Unfortunately, it it searches like Google from 15 years ago. Um, so I functionally, I may have a problem here. And that's one of the reasons I am excited about the idea of having a button and be able to ask ChatGPT some questions um, and start to get into that kind of idea and process and more kind of um, breaking down of ideas um, that that it's that that it's meant to do, so that's the idea. That's the experiment. So, but I maybe yeah, I might be changing my um, I might be changing my um, applet here in the near future. But but in but can ChatGPT find you the answer to your question about like how do you get whatever? I'll find out in your game. That's going to be the experiment. And then will it give me a link? I know it will. If I do mm -hmm. it over in the thing, like um, we were asking it the other day, because people are filing out of the pirates stadium, PNC park, of course. Um, and we're like, Oh, are they still going? I wonder when the last game is. And it keeps telling us that the last game was like the 22nd. And we're like, it's the 26th, you know, and there's literally baseball fans coming out of the, <laughs> the stadium. What's <laughs> happening? Um, and then it was like, yeah, and then that was actually the last day, I think, uh, last game. So there, there's that. So like those little kind of parsing, it doesn't, again, it's not going to be, you know, it's not the most recent information. So, but it does then tell me where to go to get the most recent information when it realizes it's not answering my question correctly. So that's been very interesting. So that's part of the experiment I want to get into. ChatGPT has been really great. Of course, we're talking about, you know, the social media and, and the summaries and the transcriptions with Mac Whisper and things like that in the past. I want to see what it does more functionally. So this has been your iPhone Minute, and I don't have a sounder for that, but I do have one for the next segment that usually starts the show. It's the awesome thing of the week. That's right. And let's go with Chilla for the first one. Chilla, Chilla, Chilla. See, I've been using it more. This iPad does not go anywhere else now because I honestly can't do much <laughs> else. Um, <laughs> I have two aged iPads over here. Hold on. Let me move this piece of pizza. One is the soundboard. The other one is simply just for a trans... Uh, um, what do you call it? Teleprompter, which I'll be using tomorrow. Mm. So, like, I have the, I've unitasked these things. Maybe I should get a new iPad in the near future <laughs> that actually does something. Uh, Chella, what is your awesome thing of the week? Because I've talked way too much for this episode. Not a problem. So, my awesome thing of the week, and I put a <laughs> link to their Instagram page, um, is called The Empire Strips Back. Mm -hmm. It is a burlesque parody show related to star wars um it is actually right now in pittsburgh at and i put in the second link i think it was the second link mm -hmm. i put like the link to fever which is where you can actually get tickets if you want to go um it's only here for one more weekend their weekend the weekend for them runs tomorrow wednesday um, october 2nd through sunday um, and they will be doing a few more tours this year. Um, I think they have Phoenix, Toronto, Cleveland, and maybe uh, I think one other one um, for the remainder of the year. 
This has been in um, far off countries like Paris, France. Um, they've been in Australia. Um, it's, I would probably say it's about a 90 minute show um, mm -hmm. and it is definitely well worth it. Um, the set design alone, like they had a, they, during a set change, they completely changed the set to look like Jabba's palace. Um, there was a dancer that came out like princess Leia. Um, the interesting thing is their entire set, because I talked to during the intermission, I was talking to someone that, that works um, on the crew. Um, he said the entire, everything that they do fits in a 40 foot trailer that they drive around, haul around. Um, and it was interesting, like watching some of the, the show, like the Java portion. Java is actually an inflatable. Um, but there's, if you, if you've ever watched the behind the scene, the, the behind the scenes of return of the Jedi, much like Jabba in return of the Jedi, there's three people inside the Jabba inflatable, mm -hmm. um, to be able to control the inflatable, but also to, um, reinforce the inflatable because we've all seen return of the Jedi. Hopefully this isn't a spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> Princess Leia jumps on top of Java Jabba and wraps the chain around his neck and chokes him. Mm -hmm. um, that happens in the show and she jumps up on the inflatable. And I was actually asking them how they did that. And they said, there's actually a person on all fours um, inside the inflatable that then she's actually kneeling on during that scene so um the the sets the costumes the whole shebang was super awesome um i would highly highly recommend it if you can make it if you can't make it to pittsburgh i think the november show is like the second or third weekend in november um if you google empire strips back cleveland you'll find it you i couldn't find it via their website in some other places mm -hmm. I mean, it was actually kind of hard to figure out some of their their information um, obviously the tech the, the tech side of it is probably not their their main forte um a lot of cool merch you can buy lightsabers you can buy t-shirts um they have calendars and last but not least they actually have um ah! it's much like a playboy mm -hmm. but it's called wookie erotica um and it is i gotta be careful with what i show <laughs> um, hold on. like they have an ad for S Skywalker black label um, it's just an all around like it's just a total spoof but it's all Star Wars related um, it is available online for $50 at yeah, Giant, it's $50 a magazine giantpandacake.com like it, it is a bit pricey but um Super cool collectible. They have they have cartoons. They have ads. You know, there's an ad. Um, we're on the scout for you. Join the dark side. Visit your nearest recruiting station. Um, and there's two different editions of it. Uh, one's a newer one. One's an older one. They did a short run. Um, it's interesting because they have disclaimers on all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer: Wookie Erotica is a parody magazine. The magazine is not sponsored, endorsed, or affiliated with any entity owning the rights to the characters or stories parodied they're in or it's a parody because i keep i keep every time i see this i'm like how do they are they getting away from that with this it's a parody therefore it is fair game for the most part um so that's incredible so so this is interesting this has been interesting because as katie and i have been traveling um you know over the last like year or so uh chilla we have started to get ads for this in other cities that we pass through mm. so like we've been aware of this for a little bit and they heard it was coming to town i'm like oh no you know and, and i almost forgot it was here so i have to uh, uh touch base with katie and missy and be like yeah, yeah, should we go like like are we going are we doing this <laughs> you know I, it's like so just so you know mm -hmm. um and i don't think i wouldn't say there's a bad seat in that no theater. i'm it's kelly strayhorn i've done some uh, streaming stuff in there and i've been up in the rafters basically for my setup 
I can't say that you're if you got that zone C. And also there are very there's variable pricing it looks like. Um, so mm-hmm. it, it is a little pricey. If you go Sunday, the lowest price is a uh, forty dollars for the for the highest ticket, highest up in the Raptors ticket. Um, so there's like a, a balcony uh, a kind of situation there. It's a nice old. It's over in East Liberty. Um, it's a very nice theater. Um, you know, smaller theater, a good size theater. Let's say that it's not the Benedum or anything like that. <laughs> so, no, but no. like, but the other thing I would say is like they they have an MC that like mm-hmm. cracks jokes. It's it's Lando's nephew. Um, he's talking and, and interacting with the crowd during set change. Mm-hmm. Um, the time honestly flies by. Um, but I will say like, cause and I had never been there before. Um, so I actually had to do some, some looking up and learning about it um, because everything's zoned, right. You don't have assigned seats. So it's first oh, come first serve. So. Interesting. so if there's a group of you go early, if there's a group of you go early, I will say I was very impressed with the people like helping people organize to sit down. They pretty much force you to move in. Mm-hmm. Like if mm-hmm. there's an end seat, you can obviously get it. Yeah. But like they will not let you leave a seat. Like if you walk in with three people and you walk down the row, yeah. they do not want you leaving a single seat between you and the next person down the row. Yeah. Um, yeah. But very polite, very nice about it. Um, I will also warn that, like, they will tell you intermission is 15 minutes. Intermission is 15 minutes, like Mm -hmm. 15-minute mark. The lights go back down. They kick off. It doesn't matter who is or isn't back in the theater. Um, Mm -hmm. Because there was, like, a they actually have, like, a small concession stand. And and then, like I said, they have a merch table and everything else. Um, But, like, that 15-minute mark, boom. Lights went down. And they were back off to the races with the show. Um, I would, like I said, highly, highly recommend. Um, if you can't make it to the Pittsburgh show, Cleveland's not that far away. And mm-hmm. I would actually say it's probably, to me, it's worth the drive Yep. Um, for, for that show. I think that, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so go check that out. Again, that's something we've been very interested in. I, I'm, I'm hoping we uh, can get everybody together and, and do this. Sometime. I don't oh. know. We, we already, we already have some, some plans for Saturday night. So I'm hoping that's not too much for the weekend, uh, for, for our crew. So, uh, they, but, uh good. They, they did allude to the fact that they would be back. Um, mm. that nice. they're, they're going to continue this tour. Mm-hmm. It sounds like they add to it over time. Mm-hmm. And also in some of their more longer running locations, um, they've kind of learned what works, what doesn't work. What's the obviously easy to transport. Um, so if you've been to another show, um, like Paris or Australia, for those of you that are world travelers, um, they, he did say it's, it's each one's kind of different. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the people I saw in this show, cause I looked a bunch of them up. It, there's a QR code you can get for the program. Um, and they have like all the people that are involved, even, mm-hmm. you know, stage hands, you know, cleanup crew, everything. Um, most of the folks in this one were out of New York. Yeah. Um, so I do, if it comes back again, I would definitely go again as well. Yep. Awesome. Boba Fett, the Boba Fett. And the, if you go look at their Instagram, there's a whole fire thing with Boba Fett. They, <laughs> he said that they, they removed that after. I think the first couple months from everything because of what it takes to be able to set fire um, in many, many, in locations. many, many like, old, lo- old theaters. <laughs> I'm sure that they end up getting old, smaller theaters. You know, they don't want to mm-hmm. have a great white situation, I suppose. Right. Yes. So. Well, and he said like what, what goes into when they even did it a few times, they did it. Mm-hmm. Um, like the fire marshal has to be there. Like they have to shut off the, the the whole alarm system and water suppression system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's like, it's just, it's just being having done shows where the smoke machine for the entrance has set up the alarm at the Monroeville Monroeville convention center. Thankfully only in testing. Uh, (laughs) yeah, no, that's a problem. Um, that's awesome. That is Chilla's. Chilla's.
thing in the week. I'm making up for lost time with these sounders. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so so because sometimes I forget to plug in the iPad. I don't want to keep it plugged in all the time. You know, little thing. Um, but anyways, so I'm excited. I actually revisited something um, two Sundays ago. It was actually when it was nice out and I had some time. And I'm like, I need to get out. I uh, went to, I haven't done it for like a year, went to Settlers Ridge, Settlers Cabin Ridge out in, mm. out towards Robinson area there. I uh, went for a nice like four mile walk kind of thing. Uh, got one of the loops. All Trails is one of the apps. I've let All Trails expire because I haven't been traveling in the same way I was before that allotted me to discover a lot of places to walk lately. Uh, so, and I do, I do subscribe, quote, subscribe to the idea that if you subscribe to things in Apple, the nice thing is you just immediately, ex, uh, cancel it so that when it, like you paid for a year, you paid for a month, wh- whatever you felt comfortable with, like you can let it expire and then make the decision on whether you want to do that again. Uh, or say, Hey, I'm not going to be using this for like three more months. I know flighty. I'm not going to use for three more months, maybe. Cause I know I don't have any trips coming up, something, 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 and then go go subscribe again when, when, it, when you need it, you know, then you mm-hmm. keep up on your subscriptions and don't let it all pile up and you're paying for stuff. You're really not even using anymore anyway. So I I'm, I'm still, I didn't resubscribe, but there's enough functionality for the free user users to, you know, go out there. I wasn't worried about downloading maps cause I knew where it was. I knew I'm, you know, not going to lose service and things like that. Right. But one of the things I did like, you know, I have, um, I'm using the Apple Watch Series 8 still um, for, for most of my stuff, and which is serving me just fine. There's no, I'm not seeing any wear or tear on that. I'll go, okay, there's wear and tear. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, little scuffs here and there. But um, I remember that there was always like a little bit to it. Um, you know, there was like a little bit of a mechanism to the Apple Watch. And I pulled it up and I was really surprised to see there's three screens to it. There's the time. The timer screen, which is pretty standard, and I think that's what was there before. And I don't know how long these these items have been here. Um, but you also have a nice little info screen of like your distance, how much distance is left, uh, how much time you've been doing, and also that is that line that you see if you're with us on video is the elevation of your thing. You see it goes pretty low and then we got a nice climb and you, you kind of have an idea where, where things are. Uh, and you can see where you're at and your dot is going to move as you go. Uh, the other nice thing to it, I think it's here, a compass. Um, Cause one thing that was nice with the app, I'd always be pulling up the app, clicking the button, go for it and see if I've gone off my trail. You know, and, and there was two points where I definitely went off my trail, misread what where the path looked like it was going to go. And instead of pulling my phone out, I was able to just look at my watch. So this compass will turn yellow if you're going off. And actually, if you look at it, you see that I was actually a little bit off trail, uh, at least what I thought was off trail. Um, and it went yellow. And then as you keep going, it's going to turn red. So again, um, I feel like I still feel like after all these years, I'm not using my watch enough. And this was one of those things in apps where it's like, oh, good, you're finally using the watch for what it's meant for. Right. Um, And that that was a really a really nice surprise coming from the all trails app. Uh, So which honestly is going to push me to hopefully use it more out there and probably end up resubscribing maybe sooner depending on how the fall weather goes, honestly, uh, and scheduling and all things like that. So, um, but yeah, so all trails, uh, really nice Apple watch integration. And I know we talked about before, I, I feel like we talk about it every three months or so when they have a, a little bit of an update. Cause I know Katie's involved in it too and everything too. Uh, really nice app. Definitely recommend it, especially if you're doing trails or want to figure out places to walk. You'd be surprised what's around you. <laughs> you know, I found when this. I thought, I mm-hmm. thought they added into Apple Maps trails. I think they parks. do too. I think they might have have as well. You, you know, I think Krause goes out to Raccoon mm-hmm. Creek State Park a lot. And I think all the trails that they walk on out there are now, and they, they've been there since parts of the beta. So he's been using that um, and, and really speaks highly of it. So mm-hmm. it would be, mm-hmm. it'd be cool if you guys compare and contrasted that's okay. Um, so, so I need to go on a walk with Katie, uh, and we each use the different trail app, right? The the iPhone version and the Apple Maps version, iPhone version, and the other one. And so, is there any integration with the watch in this though? Um, I would I mean the, the well, I guess it's Apple, Apple Maps, Maps is, right? So, 
Uh, let's yeah, see. Release do, 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 do. Apple Maps is introducing a new feature. Detailed National Park Heights and Topography Maps. That's nice. Okay. Custom walking routes. Um, all new places library. Okay. Okay. I think I will. I will get, now, so I don't know if this is a Sherlocking of this, but I guess for comparative cases, I, you know, I, 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 I'm curious. Maybe that is going to be thing when I'm someplace like if I, next time I find myself in Chicago or something, I should look at both and see mm-hmm. how they compare, right? So um, I'm actually going to send this to Katie to uh, see if she saw this too, um, since she's she's an avid trail walker. So um, no, that's very cool. No, thank you so much for the tip. And I need to put that also mm-hmm. in the show notes uh, so that I have this for later. So um, cool. Very cool. Okay. Katie's not here to do the other thing. Um is this, I did throw in a I, link. Is to, this the Amazon? All right. What, what's your yeah, so so what? Obviously, new phone, new case, and you know the new case is because you know this one. There's the the cutout for the mm. camera. The last time they had the 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 new button on the side. Um, so pretty much, I automatically order a new case when I order my new phone. Mm-hmm. I am a huge fan of Spigen. I'm, I think it's pronounced Pigeon, S P I G E N. Okay. Um, they have a lot of stuff. <clears throat> it's not, to me, overly expensive. Um, the case that I showed you is pretty darn shock absorbent. I'm not going to throw my phone on the floor to test it, but I did drop it already one time and it, it's fine. Um, but Spigeon makes a lot of different cool cases. Uh, the last one I had actually made, it had like the guts of the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, so it made it look like you were looking into the inside of the iPhone from the back. Um, they have ones that are in the original um, iMac colors. If you remember back to what you were saying, Bondi blue, blueberry, lime, tangerine, mm. strawberry, grape, graphite, etc. Indigo. They have devices in a lot of different colors. I got the, what they call the classic C1 um, MagFit that looks like an old school iMac. Um, they actually have matching um, AirPod cases. They have magnetic wallets that match the colors. You can mix match. Um, and the case is only 30 bucks. Um, I think it retails for 60, but they're all 50% off. Um, so I'm actually thinking about picking up the ones for the AirPods. Um, but, okay. and I may actually replace, so I am, and I don't think I can replace it truly honestly with one of theirs. My MagFit wallet, mm-hmm. and I have like a real like it's like a wallet, um, and it also acts as a as a um, way for me to prop up my phone when I want to. Um, the interesting thing is it's a little bit high, and the camera picks up the edge of of it. So also be 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 aware, right? Some of your Depending on the accessory, it may not work exactly how you want when you so, get the new phone. But I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of Spigen. So you know, of course, we gotta go through the oh no, I need a new case for this mode, and I, I did order mine yesterday. Uh, Missy ordered one. Um, now this is now I'm curious. Mine's going. So uh, one thing I've I haven't liked is I don't like how the camera is exposed, and I'd like to protect that lens. Not that anything has happened to the lens. Did- did but, you see their magnetic lenses, lens covers? Oh, I don't like lens covers. So here's the problem. I've had lens covers before, and I don't like what happens in the sun with them. Because I had them when we went to Arizona two years ago, and I hated every picture that came out of it. It did, I feel like it killed every compu- every the lighting on everything because there's a glare from the sun uh, at, at, in that extra layer of glass. So I rather just protect it. And this is what Missy ended up picking up. Uh, this is the uh, Vahibi <laughs> iPhone 16 Pro uh, case. Uh, it's got the MagSafe and everything. It is heavier. This one claims to have like a heavier magnetic MagSafe to it. Um, so, so it seems to kind of amplify that a little bit. But the biggest thing is it has a camera cover that slides over. I don't know how long this is going to last. I bought a similar thing. Uh, mine is a different brand. Uh, so this will be coming in tomorrow and it looks like a slower profile. Um, but I, I, well, of course I had to get a different one since I have a, a the, the, the max instead of the regular pro. Um, oh no, I think I bought it for the wrong phone. Oh no. Oh, no. That's a, that says iPhone 15. 15. 
oh, I guess I'm going to have to get one of these Bondi blue cases instead. <laughs> um, okay, I'll be returning that one to Staples tomorrow immediately. Uh, so there's that. Yeah, because they're not compatible, are they? Like, there's a little bit of a difference in, in the there, two phones. Yes, because um, you don't have the camera, the camera cut out. Um, the one thing I will say about like the Spigen case, and I, I've never dropped my phone where the like a rock has hit right where the camera is. Mm -hmm. There is a small yeah. ring. Yeah. So That's if you're putting if you put it down on a on a table, yeah, like you really don't have. So to here's it, here's yeah, it it, it 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 bumps out. Um, although it feels like the cameras stick out a little bit more on this phone. I, maybe it's just because it's out of the case and it just seems like it does. But yeah, there's like a little bit of it's, it's, it recesses those. So as long as a rock isn't right there and that's the problem, mm -hmm. it's like even on the screen, as long as you don't land a rock in the middle of the, of the screen, when you drop it, uh, you're pretty good. Like generally like the bumper is going to take care of you. So yeah, I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm glad I saw that now and I can kind of act on it then. So that'll, that'll be kind of nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so so uh, thanks for that, Chilla. I'm going to go order a new uh, case since I saw that I just uh, completely ordered the wrong one. I forgot which phone this was when I was ordering it, apparently, or I searched for it and somehow that got into my search. I've had that, <laughs> but I will say, like I had to get a case for an iPhone... 14 mm -hmm. and it kept it kept bringing me to other models mm -hmm. so I, I like to the point where i had to return two of them because i kept accidentally i thought i was I, I was typing in the right thing if i went back and looked at my search but the results that i was getting back were completely off mm. I'm looking at your Spigen, and I just want to make sure there's actually one for the Pro Max, or are these regular, are these Pro Kids? Yeah, they have pro, they there have, is a Pro, they Max. Have pro okay. Max, okay. That's the other thing I need to check. All right, orange or Bond? I kind of like the orange, to be honest. I, I like the I, I really I like, like the, the tangerine. orange. The tangerine. The tangerine? Tanger which one is tangerine? The orange. Oh, the orange. It's orange. I know it's apple. Thank you. They have the they have the graphite. I mm. I almost went for the red. So this is this is my problem. This was my problem with the pros. They gave no color to them. It's like you can have gray or black or white. Like I actually have a little bit of blue tint to my thirteen. Okay, it's like the faintest of blue. I don't even know if you can see it on the screen. And mm -hmm. I like I basically like, well I guess I'll get the black one this time. Well, by and, the way, and like I almost wonder like. How many people do you see with naked phone? Oh yeah, it, you, you're a freaking sociopath if you do. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's it's. Oh wow, this is well, this is interesting. So I, I okay, I'm doing the phone. I'm doing the phone sex thing right now. Oh god, is they're bumping? They're vibrating. <laughs> um, they're basically more. There is a the, only the slightest difference in size, guys. There's only. Uh, the, I mean, can you even? And can you even see? Uh, the difference in the height of this thing uh, and the button is uh, so size wise. And I, I think there is less bevel. I know. How can you get even less than that? Uh, so that's, that's what's kind of accounting for most of the differences in, in, in screen size, which honestly is kind of negligible probably. So I don't know enough playing with that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, Max, they have a way everything. if you if you look around on their site and i'm mm -hmm. trying to find they have a way oh it's it's on the main page for amazon if you go to smartphone apple um and then you can there's a section where you can go buy i thought it was by model um 16 pro 16 pro max and it'll show you them all and there's even more than they have just on their front page because they have the ones that, like I said, look like you're looking inside the phone. Um, they have if you if you want to show off the color of your phone, they have you know completely clear ones. I'll show off the black. Um, I'll show off the black. I'll show off the black. So where are you seeing this uh, a 16 Pro Max store? Do I just like plug in? So if you go, hold on. Go to um, show notes. 
in Katie's you, you, awesome thing of the week link you section. You, you can't even tell um, me. You can't even tell me because you have to send me a link. Oh, is it, it, it? It's it's one of those. It's it's a company landing page for Spigen, Spigen, whatever it yes. is. So okay, I, I I want the Bondi blue. I don't know about this. Uh, now I'm now I'm conflicted to find another one that has the camera um, protector or to uh, go Bondi blue. Man, I'm gonna wait till after the show to make a decision. I'm gonna try not to buy something on the show again. They have one where the, the back of it looks like an old school iPod. Mm. Okay, these are kind of fun. Okay, all right, all right, uh, all right. That's enough on phone cases. You don't care if you have a don't have a new phone, probably. <laughs> so, uh, moving on, moving on. Oh, oh, trying to not cast things. Uh, and uh, and hello, hello, our friend from Apple Land out there. Um, oh God, we have <laughs> literally there was something that wasn't working the way that we expected it to, and we were uh, uh, Missy said. Uh, we need to pray to the iPhone app gods that this will work soon because <laughs> there's something that was just like the weirdest um, uh, butting our heads against the wall thing with the new um, something about like the the, the taking the info device info over. Uh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I think of support questions whenever I see a certain name in the chat and I need to stop doing that because I feel like I'm neglecting a privilege. <laughs> so uh, anyways... <laughs> Uh, where are we with things? Is there more stuff? Uh, I don't want to talk about the one thing I got away for Katie to get into. I don't, I want to hold off on this other one. I actually want to listen to a little bit more of it, but I'm going to make, how about I'll mess mention this in passing, Chilla. You know, we listen to tech shows and I feel like I, I listen to This Week in Google, which ends up being a lot about journalism and First Amendment on the internet and, and things like that, right? And data privacy mm -hmm. and protection and use and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I came across. <laughs> did you know Pornhub has a podcast? I did not know that. Do you have? have like, what would you get? Some, I, mean, I, I gave it away a, a little bit, but where would you guess they talk about on their podcast? I would honestly guess they talk about like the back end and like how that <laughs> sounds bad. So Listen, you're not winning this one. You're not. This is all going to yeah. be tips for TikTok. But I tip. would think they would talk about like, like if you've ever like their stats pages and like, I would think that they would be. It would be totally not yeah. porn related, and it would be more porn hub related. You are relatively correct, but it is. And I did not look at. I did not no. look at the link. And so I did, I've never the podcast the I can show this is called Terms of Service, a porn hub, porn hub podcast. Uh, it is, uh, they say that they talk about censorship and the politics of free speech co-hosted by the Pornhub brand ambassador and, uh, one in, and actually, um, a renowned performer and Pornhub's head of brand and, oh, there's a more button, uh, situation. Um, so, so I, I listened to a little bit. I think the guest wasn't great, but I actually recognized one of the guests that's in the, like two episodes ago. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go on to that. Like they had a lawyer and the lawyer, was you know on Skype <laughs> you know, sounding thing and was not it was not a well flowing kind of thing, um, but the information was very good for it. Um, I, I was actually listening to it a little bit. Actually, if you were on the Patreon stream and you're like, "What is this?" It talks about kind of the history of um, like this guy worked with Larry Flint and and and, and uh, uh, Playboy in the past and and talked about things to keep um, keep porn companies from becoming under scrutiny because of some of the interpreted laws in certain regions. Uh, so it, it is, if you're very interested in censorship free speech thing, this is actually very interesting, you know, and you know, if you're, it's not just the, Hey, you know, the political stuff. And it was like, you know, talk about how they are handling the most targeted thing when it comes to censorship, which would be adult performers and, 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 and material like this. Um, that will, that will educate the rest of it. I feel. So, um, so definitely if you are interested in that, interested in, in, in like in the technology side and they are talking about the technology of like, uh, some of the rules that are banning them from certain places and certain websites, even seeing the thing where, um, uh, cause this has actually been happening uh, where I should have stayed this, shaved this part, save this for part for Patreon. Um, when you are, uh, uh, let's say that there is a site like Pornhub that has the, uh, was it Arkansas? I think that you go to and you know if you're seen to be in arkansas it's going to block you mm -hmm. it's bleeding over into other states 
like even though it's just Arkansas, it picks up in other states, right? Um, mm-hmm. So you could be in Michigan, and and it thinks you're in Arkansas for some reason. So now you have to use a VPN to tell it you're not in Arkansas, even though you're already not in Arkansas, which is this thing you can do in Arkansas. So what are we even doing here? But there's actually a really good discussion on this podcast about how to, because one of the things that they're proposing is ID verification for sites like Pornhub and, oh, actually, I, basically the entire internet. Uh, but, you know, because they want, they want you to, to ID in order to go to like Facebook and uh, uh, the, the EU, I think, is trying to do this as well. And there is they are talking about a version of this that they're looking at where it is, um, you know, the 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 id is happening on device so now all they get is because the problem is if we're all sending our driver's license to one source so that we can go on facebook pornhub etc now all of our stuff and all the sites we go to are on a database that any that will get hacked let's be honest Mm -hmm. about this it will get hacked and that information will be out there but now we're all required by law to use it you know what i mean it's kind of like the, uh, I never asked to be part of Experion that got hacked. I never asked to be part of a data, data broker that, that got hacked. And now my, my social, every one of our social security numbers are out in the wild, right? Um, so the idea of it happening in those secure enclave things, like we talk about, hey, my face and my thumbprint and all that stuff are on these devices. I'm not worried about it because there are, it's here on this device, not out there on a server not, not synced somewhere not synced somewhere and accessible you know what i mean like like that kind of idea so um so very interesting terms of service pornhub pornhub podcast uh I'll put in your feed it's the thing is it's going to download every episode onto my uh, iphone i just know it <laughs> how, how <laughs> often just, do they publish is it like a monthly it says quarterly? so it's weird i looked at the thing and it says bi-weekly but they're like dropping like on september 16th they looked like they dropped two episodes three of them on the four of them on the 10th so i think <laughs> i don't know they just started or maybe they reposted it or something because the original ter- the original um plug for it or episode of it was back in november of 23 so maybe they're just generally inconsistent um or maybe they're just getting into the bi-weekly idea but they're just just maybe it's just old content they dropped in there when they kind of rebooted or something so mm-hmm. um but yeah um yeah so so that, that that's been an interesting discussion and i think it's pretty good for uh people who want to be in the know for for that kind of stuff and 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 again as we've illustrated on this show several times I need to like, look at the. I need to. I haven't looked at so long at the Pornhub blog because it's actually a very interesting. Uh, Katie's brought up so many stories from it about data and technology from the Pornhub blog. Like it should mm-hmm. be in. It should be next to the, next to the Verge dot com. To be quite honest, uh, for and that's where that's when it, when you talk about the podcast. That's exactly where my mind went. Like where Katie's brought a lot of their their data analytics and stuff to the show. So. Mm-hmm. It is very interesting. So, um, oh, well, this is season two. That's why there's been a, a big, that's why it's probably popped up in my feed. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I think there's a little bit. So, so it's seasonal. Seasonal podcasts always, I find very interesting. Um, it's can, as somebody who does weekly podcasts, and that's almost about it. I mean, one of the, some of our client stuff has been seasonal, but, you know, other than that. So, um, I feel like it's less and less data than there used to be. Now I look up, it's about model programs and things like that. Purely uh, NSFW or non NSFW uh, uh, mm-hmm. f- looks fairly work safe on the blog if you're interested in it, but I'm sure it's <laughs> still a problem. Anyways, on that note, Chilla, I think it's about pumpkin time for you. It's past pumpkin time. It's two past pumpkin time. It's two past pumpkin two time. Past we pumpkin time for you. Hey, it's so. good to have you back here. Uh, uh, have fun with that. your uh, Common Core math or whatever other homework that needs to happen. Uh, actually, have you had to deal with Common Core math? We have. It's not that bad. Um, um, we're building a, a diorama for Ooh, school. So. I never got the diorama. I always like their dioramas were always in the library, but like I never was in the class that made the dioramas. And I'm not entirely what class that was in retrospect either. I'm talking elementary school here, but mm-hmm. I was well, still fifth grade. So still elementary. Yeah. That's about where I was talking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I missed the dioramas. I don't know. Maybe there was a gifted class. I wasn't a part of yet. Anyways, 
Chilla, good to be with you. At Chilla or, or at Chilla579, depending on the social medias. I tag you in most of them. I don't know if you're aware of it. <laughs> no problem. I'll find it. There you go. And you'll get the tags on Instagram later this week. Uh, thank you so much for everybody. Um, and uh, I presume we will not do Patreon unless I'm just going to talk to you by myself. Uh, so, But we do have the, uh, the the main feed so you can just hear me talking about it. Wow, it's really boring on the Patreon this week. Although I'm glad I muted the Zoom for because they were talking about certain um, uh, certain practices on porn. <laughs> a porn hub and, and stuff um that would have been the phrase that chilla popped in on <laughs> <laughs> and only you on patreon will know what i'm talking about so um yeah i think that's what it's gonna be i'm gonna get so i can get the patreon on early whatever podcast i'm gonna just point the mic at my phone because i usually listen to one of the podcasts uh on the way here usually erotic online but now it might be the porn hub podcast to be quite honest because i'll be in the mindset for it uh anyways Thank you, everybody, at Sorgatron on all the social medias for whatever craziness might be going on uh, uh, now and in the past. And also a lot of my clips from from these shows and other shows that I'm I'm part of and sometimes wrestling stuff, too. Uh, So actually wrestling, wrestling stuff, not just talking about wrestling. Um, Not me wrestling, but things happen, you know. Uh, Thank you so much, everybody. You have been our awesome audience. Where's my mouse? Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.